Well, I feel honored to be able to introduce you all to a new antenna. Chameleon antennas, which, you know, I've done a lot of videos with them both in their their vertical antennas, their loop antennas, their wire antennas. I have really liked their robust manufacturing. We've been to Rolltech now twice. They do a lot of the building, the material, both research and development, but manufacturing down here in Santa Ana, California. But they said we've got something new for you, which I'm I'm holding a major component of it in my hand. This is a adjustable vertical antenna that is good from 10 meters up to 40 meters. Pretty much out of the box with whatever kit they put together. This is a development unit. Like there's literally only like one of these uh, that exists right now and, and I have it. What it looks like though is you, you can add the spike to the bottom or maybe you add their chaw clamp. They have two. They have the claw clamp and then they have like the C clamp design. I reviewed the C clamp. They take their vertical, which this is a somewhat newly designed vertical, threads in the top here. And uh, it's not very long. And in fact, the, the elements are pretty thick. That's the top element. Look how thick that is. It's like the thickness of my almost of my pinky there. Uh, you stretch this all the way out. And then they have a radial plate on the bottom, this little donut that has holes on the outside. And you shove the banana plugs into the side of it. And that's basically how you set the antenna up. And then the magic begins of, well, where's the resonance spot for the frequency you're on? Loosen the wing nut and extend the vertical, extend the coil, lengthen the antenna, right? I took this out for a POTA activation when I was in San Francisco on Angel Island. The November zero, Victor Romeo Sierra. November zero, Victor Romeo Sierra. You're five nine and apart. Kilo eleven twenty three. All right, QSL uh, eleven twenty three uh, five nine, uh, is a little bit west of LA, uh, using RHR right now. Oh, right on. Remote ham radio, right? It turns out that during that activation, there was all kinds of solar activity, which really, really hurt propagation for us on HF. So I had a tremendously difficult time. Not to mention, I didn't follow 100% of the directions uh, from Carl and company on where this should be assembled. I set this up a little too close to a chain link fence, which, you know, it's, these have low takeoff angles. The RF kind of shoots out um, almost parallel to the ground and, you know, all over the place, but that's one of the directions. And so we were, we we're losing some of that capability into that uh, metal fence. This was set up close by. So I'm gonna show you what this all is on the tabletop, give you a closer look, and then we're gonna take it out to the park. And since I have you here, why not remind everybody, uh, things like the clamp, the C-clamp, your coax goes on the bottom, your radials go on the side here, this little C-clamp. I did, again, did a video on this, and you would just put the PRA right on the side, and then this clamps on the side of your picnic table. So you still have your radials, you still have all of that, or you could use the spike that Chameleon has with this as well. All effective ways of getting on the air. So let's take a look at that antenna and then get it out to the park and make some contacts. Here is pretty much everything that Chameleon sent me to take a look at. All of this parts, all of these parts together make up the portable resonant vertical antenna, but probably the thing that's probably gonna get the most attention is this anodized coil system. It features some similar design throwbacks like to the hybrid mini and hybrid micro. Notice it's got the threaded connector on the bottom. It has the SO239 on the side. The way this is all machined out, the way this is kind of the edge is uh, at an angle here. Now, what this is doing, right? So if you think coax, right? You got a center pin and then you got the shield. The shield is ground. The shield is what connects to your radial lines, all that stuff, your counterpoise. But this pin, it makes up this upper portion, right? Which leads to the threaded connector, which goes to the whip. And if you loosen this screw here, this little wing nut, and you pull, it's a coil, right? So the more you engage, right? So every bit you're engaging here is adding length to the overall antenna, right? It's adding the overall vertical length. So if I pull all the way out and I attach this whip at the end, I'll basically be running on 40 meters, which is cap this antenna is capable of 10 through 40 meters, right? So what you're doing is you're physically lengthening the antenna. Every time you extend the outer shield here, you are shorting the antenna. Everything from here, from basically the point where it connects and up is the shorted bit. So if you go all the way down, we're shorting out the coil. It's just coax, your radial, whatever you're using as a mount, and then the stinger, the whip, right? 
So, okay, that's kind of how coils work, these adjustable coil antennas. Really nice. All This is all anodized aluminum, which you're, you're probably seeing on the camera there. But what does it all come with? Well, you need to mount it to something. And, and what they provided, Carl and company, they sent their well-known, well-used chameleon spike. And so with the spike, this goes in the ground, obviously. The way you would use this in the past is you'd twist off the bit here and you'd add your radial wires under this little screw. But they thought, nah, we're gonna do something a bit different and they made this puck, this radial puck. And this is just lots of holes, kind of equally spaced out along the edge. Notice the edge or the interior here is concave and it lines up with the base of the vertical, the coil. So you can spin that on here, fits right in there, recessed, and then you can take the spike and you can screw that in. So this makes up the base of your antenna, if you will. Then you come back around to now this is the top of the spike and the antenna and you add their new customized vertical whip. And that's pretty much your whole antenna. You just add radials and extend the whip out all the way and that gets you on the air, at least until the point that you need to make the adjustments, the fine adjustments on the coil, like so. A couple of things that jumped right out at me was obviously this radial plate. I really, really like the, uh, the radial plate design because it's really simple. Before you had to screw something underneath this little guy here and you'd need that be done beforehand before you'd get on, you know, drag out your radials and all that. In this case, it's really simple. You, you just get the vertical set up, then you grab your little banana plugs here, shove them in here. They are a bit tight, but you want it a bit tight. Then you loosen up this uh, elastic string and just walk out the radials. In fact, I, I rewound some of these into a Y configuration. Like this, it's kind of end over end, which doesn't work. Now, this is a, this is a testing unit. They, they sent this to me to test, right? So some of these radials are already pre-cut. In fact, I have two different spools of these and I think I have four of each. 17.5 feet and 12.5 feet. They are modifying the manual, the instructions of how they want you to utilize this antenna and it's going to change which radial wires, the links you might use. But let's take a look at something else too that they included, which this was kind of, uh, didn't, didn't expect this. I don't, I don't know what this is for yet. I think this obviously adds vertical length to the antenna. So I think you add this to the, the top of the coil here, and then you add the whip on top of this. I don't know, this isn't a ton of length, so I don't know what you get out of that. Now, I think it's only fair that I take this kit back out into the field and we do a bit of a, a numbers test using Whisper, possibly FT8 to get a better idea of a comparison here because... Oh, wait, one more thing. Remember when I went to Rolltech, which is the one of the manufacturing arms of Chameleon Antennas, and I was talking about wires and my request that Chameleon work on colorful, colorful winders and colorful, colorful wire. For those of you that do parks on the air activation, you got people you worry about clotheslining themselves they did it. Not only did they make an orange counterpoise kit, which you could use this as counterpoise wire, you could use this for other things as well. They made a yellow one as well with matching winders. And then for those of you that still want to be a bit stealthy, they have the uh, green, I guess you'd call that the army green or the olive drab. I love the look of these, the yellow and the orange. Look at these guys. Perfect. For me, this is perfect. I want something high vis, particularly like this yellow against grass. Orange is good, but yellow against grass is really, really nice. People will be less likely to trip over it. They're still gonna trip over it, less likely. All right, let's go to the park. So I know I said in the field, but I, what I really meant was in the front yard. I'm gonna show you how to operate this antenna just to get it tuned up and get on the air for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, this thing has put me through my own paces and it turns out that it was really not its fault. Let me explain. This is a prototype antenna, right? You probably already saw this on the HOA Hams channel. If you haven't, go check out his video. He did a really good job. But that's the antenna he was using. And it got shipped to me, and then I put it in a bag. I, tra I traveled it up to San Francisco, tried to do an activation on Angel Island, and realized really wasn't tuning up that well. Well, I found the reason. 
The two Allen heads at the top of the coil had become loose, and that made it difficult to get a constant kind of tune on it, if you will. Uh, by subtle little movements, it caused it to be out of whack a little bit, and uh, it, it wasn't tuning up correctly. In fact, it, it showed as almost shorted out, meaning it was only the coil that I was kind of transmitting into. So flash forward to today, like two weeks later, I realized it's kind of getting this little wobble. Went in there, tightened things down. No, I didn't use Loctite or anything like that. And I pass the information back on to Chameleon. They know now, and they should get it all sorted out before this becomes available to you, which is why we do this. Let's talk about some fundamentals of these vertical antennas. All of them have some kind of radial system that they deploy. Some will say you need three, others will say you need four, some will say you even need one. I've always found more is generally better. You're aiming for either one quarter wavelength of the desired wavelength you want to be on or one eighth wavelength of what you want to be on. The antenna, right, so this maxes out at 40. So you'd like to be on one eighth of 40 meters, which is roughly 16.5-ish feet. Uh, I have one of the experimental radials from Chameleon. They pre-cut these. I have been experimenting with different lengths. I found 16.5 to work pretty well for me. I am in a much more arid ground climate, if you will. My substrate is so much different than that of HOA Hams in Florida. He gets a lot more salt water, so he's going to have a lot better ground composition. Uh, folks in like Ohio, for instance, where you have really lush and nutrient rich rich soil, you're gonna have a much better time with radial systems than I do out here in Southern California because I'm, it looks pretty, but I'm basically on desert. Substrate underneath me is, is pretty bad. So uh, I've had to play around with my radials. I'm overlaying on the screen right now what Chameleon recommends. They recommend anywhere between three of their pre-cut radials down to one depending on bands of operation. I've found myself that 20 meters Seems to like just one or two radials, whereas everything else will take three to four radials. And let me show you how you get those all tuned up right now. I have my stake in the ground over there, right? I have pushed it into place, maybe used a plastic mallet to do that safely. You don't want to screw this in and then push down with the coil. You'll damage this. So my coil has the vertical attached to it. I'm simply going to drop it in. Let those threads kick in. And then when we locked in, the whole thing turns. Okay, plug in your coax. And I have a pre-cut run to 16.5 foot radials that I've just bundled together. And I'm going to extend the whip. Okay, coil is all the way closed. I'm overlaying on the screen again the chameleon recommendations for how much space there should be on your first go around using the coil, at least like a gross adjustment if you will. As always, you can tune to the most noise, the most ambient noise you can hear on your radio on your receiver using that coil. And that gets you pretty close, but uh, let's use their example and I'll show you how to use an SWR meter to tell you if you're close or not and how to find where the resonance spot is. Chameleon documentation recommends 3.3 centimeters of coil, exposed coil if you will, to get close to 20 meters. So we'll turn the screw and then just raise this up about 3 centimeters. And note while you're adjusting the coil, you're going to both feel and hear like a click. And that's the outer tube uh, riding up all the separate coils. So the coil is just a unbroken kind of wire, right, that's been coiled up. And as those fingers, those metal fingers on the outer tube ride up the different coil segments, you're going to hear it as clicks and feel it as clicks. And so the basic tuning understanding is once you get the gross adjustment, 3.3 centimeters, we're going to use the SWR meter to give us a reading on where the SWR is at. Let's check it. So I, I guess I did, I did really well. So I, I gave it 3.3 centimeters, I guess as good as I can, and I'm using an SWR readout on my meter here. Uh, we're a little bit high. Uh, we're north of 2 to 1 SWR, but guess what? The tuning instructions basically say take it to less than 2 to 1 SWR and stop. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get this a little bit better because the frequency I want to be on is actually 14.074 
or around there for FT8 and Whisper. So let me change the frequency. And I'm just gonna drop this down one, and I'm gonna hit okay. Ah, two to one. Okay, so that's telling us that the antenna is short, meaning it's physically shorter than the resonant spot of this, right? Because if it was, if it got better, then that means the antenna was the right length versus it's a little short. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna add one click. Hey, and that improved things. 1.45 to 1. That's how you tune a vertical. I, uh, I, I got really lucky. <laughs> so let's actually screw up this a little bit and I'll show you how if you're way out of whack to get it close. I'm gonna drop it down like four. Actually, I don't know how many I did, but um, I'm definitely off the tune. 7.1. And looking at it, I can say, yeah, that's under three centimeters. So the chameleon guidelines are pretty straightforward for this. You just go up two clicks at a time. And so, yeah, you're gonna be walking back and forth. And if this were your radio, you're likely going to be keying up on AM or RIDI or FM is gonna be the best. FM or RIDI are gonna do really well for you. That's gonna give you a constant carrier output that you can use your SWR meter on your radio to tell you what you're seeing, 7.1 SWR. That's what I would see on my radio. Let's adjust up too and see what happens. Ah, what a change. Two SWR jump gets you to 3.1, pretty good. Take another two. Now every time you test your antenna, you need to get away from it because uh, your body being in close proximity is going to give you some reaction to the actual antenna and what its tuning looks like. Hey, 1.45, good, good. All right, what happens though if you, you slipped and you made like four clicks? Well, command's got the answer for that too. Oh no, now the antenna is too long on the coil mount. So now we're just gonna come back down. So let's go down two. 2.4. So we've made the antenna too long, we've made the antenna too short. Now we're gonna go ahead and just give it another two. One point nine. Uh, I think maybe one might get us there. Let's try one. Oh, wait, did I go too far? I think I did. So if I went one down and I thought it was one off, let's go two up. And there it is, I think it actually got better. 1.42 to one. That's how you do it. The, the way to look at it, actually let me give you another view here on my handy dandy uh, SWR meter. So if I go to the ham band, so this yellow line, that is our resonance spot, or that's the SWR curve, that's not the resonance. That's just the SWR curve, and it's a salad bowl. If I uh, extended this out a bit, let me give you, this is a measurement of the standing wave ratio, what we call SWR, which is the reflected power so that we're getting back on the antenna. I turned everything around for whisper on 20 meters. Weak signal position reporting? Sure, why not? Here's my results. Looks like the longest station was about 5,718 miles away, one Lima Uniform 7 Mary Tango. For those that don't know, whisper is basically your station transmitting a beacon, and any stations that pick up that beacon post it online and determining the different distance between your two stations and the signal report, signal strength, quality, etc., gives you an idea of how well your station is transmitting. And you can kind of do vice versa if you know the station is transmitting whisper and you pick it up, that kind of thing. If you see an interesting DX station, for instance, kind of on the screen of WSJTX, for instance, uh, yeah, that gives you an idea of how well you're transmitting and receiving. 3,957 kilometers one November whiskey two whiskey cheers you're the longest person I've heard so far but since we're having so much fun I'm in the middle of my second whisper I am going to uh, pause this when it's done and we're gonna switch to 40 try that out 
time's about right. Let's see what happens. Uh, good enough to get rolling again. 1.4 uh, at 7.08. Now, it's not evening yet, so we don't expect some crazy numbers for 40 meters. But longest station is 18, 1,873 miles away. A Kilo X-Ray 4 Alpha Zulu. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, considerably less stations as well picked me up. But uh, I just factor that in as probably being a day-night time cycle. To have real confidence on the testing, if you will, you would need to basically run some kind of a, some kind of a standard antenna, which you had a baseline for, so like a dipole on 40 meters, for instance. And then you could apply that uh, those standards against that of like a vertical antenna or some antenna under test. The issue, of course, is that conditions change propagation changes and that makes these kind of a b tests very difficult all right so what are my thoughts on the new chameleon adjustable portable resonant vertical antenna i swear i'm going to remember it at some point uh so what what what's different what's new here that we haven't seen well we we know the spike we love the spike uh, that's available on the m pass system and a number of other things this is to me i think just a cut down vertical much like we like the uh, SS17, which is a which is a great setup. So, great. We love the SS17, right? Because we can just set it up uh, with a spike or the hybrid mini, and we can go all the way down to 20 meters, and and all the way up to six meters and 10 meters and everything in between, right? So we love that. What we didn't have though was a portable or more portable option to get us all the way down to 40 meters. Now, you could argue that the lefts, the you know the end-fed sloper that they have, uh, wire antenna is more portable than this, and the spike, and the I threw that vertical too far, and the vertical, all that's true, right? This is all bulk that you have to carry, uh, but when you go with the lefts, you have a much longer wire that you have to put up. M pass as well, right? The M pass has a wire system that can be uh, set up for it. So these are compromised antennas. All the companies that make coil antennas like these are compromised, right? This, this loaded area, this is called a loading coil, it's not resonating. The RF is not really coming out of here. And if it is, you're, you're not really getting a lot of performance out of it. Uh, what is the resonant or resonating bit is that vertical. So the more vertical you have in the air, the more close to effective and efficient it is. That's why we always say, you know, full length wire in the air is better than uh, not some full length wire, like a uh, random wire antenna along those lines, right? We want to aim for the appropriate length of wire in the air. And sometimes that appropriate length of wire in the air is just a physical vertical whip like this. Right? Right. Okay. So you're paying for portability. You're paying for obviously chameleon materials, which uh, I always mention every time I make a video of chameleon. People sometimes complain about the cost of chameleon. You're paying for quality. You, you can go watch my videos at Roll Tech. You can look at uh, other people's videos. Don't trust me. Look at other people's videos and the quality of their stuff. It speaks for itself. I know that we'll sort something out here for, for this little screws here. The, the top two screws and um, yeah frankly I think this is great it fits perfectly in a carry-on roller board or backpack if you don't want to carry on or you don't want to have an extra piece of luggage and you want to go all backpack whereas the SS17 whip will not so for that alone uh, it gets my portability marks in use case Hopefully you saw my overlay on the screen with how we did on Whisper. Uh, for what we heard, it did did fairly well on the receive side, so I can only imagine that the transmit did okay too. Obviously I'm making this before I have looked at the data for which we have just transmitted, so I hope that makes sense. Guys, leave your comments below. I give Chameleon a lot of credit for sending me something that is, actually all companies that do this, that send me something that is not completely done Every time companies have done that, they have uh, have treaded into dangerous waters because a lot of people watch my channel and they want me to give them kind of my recommendation on would I buy this product. And if it's not complete, it's hard for me to recommend it. With that said, if you like Chameleon and you've been looking for a vertical antenna that will take you all the way down to 40 meters and all the way up to 10 meters, this might be the one for you because it is so portable. 
easily goes into a rollerboard suitcase and you should feel pretty confident if you take the time and do some study of the radials. I'm, I'm assuming that Chameleon will help us out a lot and they'll have some pre-cut options for you. But even then, it doesn't hurt to build up your own radials and do some testing with it, right? Whisper testing, testing with your analyzer. If you have a nano VNA, this would be perfect project for you. Anyway, I hope this helps. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed, would recommend you do that. It's free after all. And if you don't like the videos after you subscribe, go ahead and stop. Cancel. It's no problem. Anyway, I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later. 73.